evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, the largest single-screen drive-in in the United States. We're certainly glad you could be with us this evening. And don't forget the concession stand is open with all kinds of great things to eat and drink. Eighty-nine point three Mahoning Drive-In Radio, your old friend Virgil back once again for another exciting episode of the podcast. As you all know, the only podcast dedicated to the love and revival of our beloved drive-in culture. Joined as always by my co-host and general manager extraordinaire Mark. Say hello, my friend. Hello. And uh, Jeff's in the house, King Jeff, uh, owner projectionist extraordinaire. Say hello, my friend. Yowzer. Yowzers! That if you know if my calling card is the laugh, Yowzer is Jeff's calling card. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest comeback ever. And uh, today we are joined by uh, one of the family, one of the many of the family. And it's been a while since we've seen him in the off season. To give a little timestamp, we're about a month away from opening up for our 2023 season with Wizard of Oz and Willy Wonka. And uh, the plans and events have been coming out hot and heavy. People are so excited. We are just uh, so ready to get back in the saddle. But when it comes to keeping the peace at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, many people always wonder, you know, what does it take? What type of person does it take to, you know, run that gate, to hold the order on the lot, to, if as, as I said, keep the peace? And uh, today we're joined by uh, the king of the lot, Dave Wirt. Say hello, my friend. Well, okie dokie, Smokey. I guess we can get this party started. <laughs> um... <laughs> For those who don't know, that's an inside joke because that's what Dave says every night over the radio to the staff members just before he opens a gate. So you just got <laughs> the inside word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get you the okie dokie, Smokey t-shirt. <laughs> yeah that's my calling card I, you guys would uh not sh be sure what's going on you know that's right it's great to talk to you guys i mean it's it's felt like it's been forever uh you know the the off season you 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 know as you get towards the end of the season you're like i think i could use a break but it's surprising how long um the off season turns out to be when you really miss your family here the yeah. six months off feels endless you know it is it's one of those things where you I, I always have these dreams of what's going to get accomplished in the off season you know things like life and not work related and somehow it's just you know this the off season as long as it seems always seems to uh just slip slip away but uh, <laughs> last time we had you on dave was for our lot crew we had the whole entire team on and over this last season, that team has become you. <laughs> <laughs> you you are last man standing. There and is an I in that team. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a little of attrition. Yeah, it's, it's it's you know it's like uh, it's like the the guy at the end of the marathon. But uh, I am very excited uh, as we look at as we look at um, the upcoming season twenty twenty three. I've already started to talk to, you know, the lot crew, the 2023 newly assembled Avengers here that we are putting together. I, I've, you know, the Daryl and, and Bruno, um, certainly Robert, who at the end of last season stepped in to learn the uh, the fine art of, uh, of lot maintenance, as well as John. And uh, we have a we have a lot of folks who are excited to to join the adventure. I'm super excited. They're all friends and family. I, I love these guys. So I think we are going to build a truly Black Dragon Fighting Society uh, lot crew uh, team this year. Are you Count Dante? I am. I'm, I will be the Count Dante of the Black. In this Scotland. scenario, yes. <laughs> you know, we heard uh, this is the local news speaking. We heard that. Your local uh, drive-in lot crew is managed by the deadliest man alive. That's <laughs> what it takes. Yeah, for, yeah. Uh, again, a little inside baseball, Dave did send out some uh, uh, some choice messages today to get the lot crew ready. We are all going to be in fighting style when we get back for our 
uh, season. He said, we are not taking lights on the screen lightly this year. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's nothing that a hammer won't fix. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, why don't we uh, why don't we talk a little bit about your role, the development at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater? Because again, last time we talked to you, you were the newbie, you were the fresh blood, you were, <laughs> as the guys kept calling you, the rookie. I, I so yeah, now you've become the guy who runs the lot, runs the gate, and how did that all happen for you? I mean, it was quite the transition and quickly. Listen, I um. If you think about it, Zombie Fest of 20, not last year, but the previous year, Zombie Fest 21 was not only the first time that I volunteered at the Mahoning, it literally was the first time I had ever been to the Mahoning. That was that was the first time I set foot on the lot. And I, I stepped in as a volunteer because I was like, if I'm going to, you know, dive in, let's do the deep end. Um, and it's amazing how quickly, uh, literally by the end of that weekend, I was so in love with that place. I, I was already planning when I could come back up. It, it just, the, it just the environment of the place, although it was, I don't think it stopped raining all weekend. But so the environment of the place, I'm saying in a, in a, a metaphysical sense and even at its worst you fell in love with us even at its worst i fell but will and john took me under their wing and became probably two of the closest dearest friends I, i've ever had i mean i just love those two guys so you know i was very eager to to volunteer as much as i could that season and by the end of the season you approached me and said listen we love having you as a volunteer. Would you be interested in, in, you know, doing this as a job, you know, or at least well as, you know, as a part-time job. And I was flattered to just be asked and considered. I mean, I started out just wanting to help and, and be there and to feel that you, you know, to have you guys show me that kind of faith and say, Hey, we want to bring you in and make you part of the family was, was, very flattering and very touching and i was happy to join to join the crew so yeah, as, as we approached last year i was still the well, the trainee as as john would tell me but well, at the beginning of last year we had a couple john and will um for some personal reasons and entirely with in, in conjunction and conversation and and with absolutely my blessing i love those two guys felt they needed to take some personal time away so at that point i just said i'll step up and and do what i need to do to make sure that the the wheels in the bus go round and round so i guess i don't know that's a, is it the long version of the story but um <laughs> and at that point you were the seasoned vet you know like we have talked about it on the previous podcast you were on it comes up often we went through war together with that <laughs> joe bob's jamboree and that was really early in your run and mm -hmm. more than any other event. I mean, that was the one that just showed us how on board you were. I mean, if anybody is going to reach their breaking point <laughs> out on that lot with the baking sun, the insane hours, the, the packed lot, the... I mean, talk about seeing us at our craziest, right? Dude, I'm I'm, I'm still triggered by Arctic Blue Gatorade. That's all I can say. <laughs> I just um, I see that and immediately just start start getting the flashbacks. Sweats. Oh man, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> to sit down for at least half an hour. And I think that's really what uh, you know gave us the confidence in knowing that it's the right choice. I mean, that and a series of other things that led up, but. You know, like you said, the the guy's choice to leave was purely to pursue things in their own life and to get other things in their life on track. And it is, it's a demanding job and one that, especially if you're an hour and a half plus away, oh, uh, sure. becomes very difficult to manage. You know, the sure. way that we structured our business um, after we have gone from an all-volunteer staff is a group management system. So each department has somebody 
who is responsible for that department and leads it. And in the case of the lot, there's a lot of hats to wear. So why don't you tell people what it means to be uh, the lot manager at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a glorious position. You get to do a little of everything. Honestly, my absolute favorite part of the job, and this is the one that I would hate to ever have to give up, is I get to take the tickets. So I get to be the guy at the gate. I get to be the first person you see. I get to be the smile on, on, on my face and the face of the Mahoning and welcome you to the Mahoning. I love that. Actually, I, I think that's my, I, I think that part of the job is, is my favorite because it really is fun seeing the people. It's, it's cool when they've never been there before and you can give them kind of the whole lowdown and you, you see the, the looks on their faces and the excitement. Uh, yeah. It's so cool when they pull up and are taking pictures of the sign and it's like, wow, okay. Because sometimes you get a little jaded because, you know, we've been here and, and we've, we work here and we don't get that fresh perspective. And you kind of get that sometimes when, when, when newbies pull up, which is really cool. Oh yeah, what I, what I found being out in the convention scene in the off season promoting the drive in, we are like this phantom place for people. Like <laughs> I am gonna get there one day, and I what I always hear, I follow what you, I follow everything you guys do. I see everything you guys do, and I'm gonna get there one day. And it really is a pilgrimage that uh, people have to make. And being the guy that is is there to greet them as they come in for that landing to their cinematic haven it's really special and being that my office is right next to the gate i hear you um and the crew <laughs> in full form all the time and it just it it warms my heart to no end knowing that every person that comes through the gate is just getting bombarded with love well that's that's what we try you know what's cool my girlfriend and i we're down at the Philadelphia Museum of Art uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was wearing my Mahoning hoodie because I, I'm pretty much Mahoning branded everywhere I go. Um, <laughs> you are a team player, that's for sure. I think virtually you can attest to the fact that every Facebook photo of me, I think I'm wearing uh, something Mahoning. A hundred percent. It's like a NASCAR driver. <laughs> You take pride in the place you work. That's great. Heck yeah. So I was I was going into the Philadelphia Museum of Art and the guy who took our ticket saw my hoodie and said, Oh, the Mahoney. I've heard of them. And I'm and my girlfriend always goes, He works here. He works there. Cause she's like <laughs> Got And so off, right? I, I stood there and gave him the whole Mahoning pitch as I'm I'm heading into the Philadelphia Museum of Art. But you're right, like our legend <laughs> extends. I mean, a lot of people have heard about us, and it's really cool. So yes, that's one of the primary um, aspects of the job, the tickets. And then of course there's just the lot maintenance itself. So on a typical night, that will include making sure the garbage is, is emptied out and, and cleared, uh, chasing down any headlights. If, uh, if you're one of those folks whose headlights are on the screen, you'll probably hear me knocking at your window um, eventually, quickly as possible, <laughs> and just general maintenance of the lot and maintaining the lot, helping anyone who needs help. It's some nights that might mean, you know, doing car jumps, which is part of the job and quite honestly it's it's really not that tough part of a job if 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 they're not too dead or they're not an electric vehicle which are becoming more and more challenging but needless to say i like doing it i don't know what your perspective is but you get to be a superhero for a second where you're just like i am gonna save these people's day Listen, it <laughs> makes my night if i can send somebody home who was like I've been in that kind of spot where like you're sitting there and you turn that car on and it just clicks and you're just like, yeah. oh, my. And, you know, he's like, we're not going. There nowhere. is that sinking <laughs> feeling like, oh, crap. So to be the guy who's able to, you're right, be the hero or relieve that burden from him and be able to send him home with a smile. Now the entire experience is complete because he's going home even happier. Heck yeah, that's a that's that's not a bad job, man. 
And you bookend the experience. They're like, that's the guy that greeted us on the way in, and he saved us on the way in. <laughs> But, you know, and then there's the other stuff, too. You know, just the general maintenance of the lot, the keeping the the, tr the shrubs trimmed, keeping the grass mowed, um, potholes filled. Uh, so that's that's yeah. the fun stuff we do in the off time. And, uh, you know, I'll it's, tell you it's... what. I went up several times this winter, and I was amazed at how good that exit road is still in good shape from you taking such good care of it last year i couldn't believe how good it still is right now yes i am pleased to hear that thank you jeff you bet. one of our preseason goals this year is we want to see if we can trim it down a little bit further too so we can get even more of that rope light out so i think that'd be even cool if we can yeah. build that longer landing strip i think it'll give us a little bit more pizzazz there so but thank you thank you that's good to hear i'm but yeah, it's um, so just basically taking pride in the place. And and that's the thing, because it's not just a matter of doing it because it's my job. It's I'm doing it because I legitimately take pride in the place and really want it to look good. I want people to have that experience where they're like, wow, I got there and it's it's it just it looks well maintained. And it's it's they take good care of the place and the good care of the people. And if I can contribute yeah. that to the operation, then I'm, I'm doing my job. Right. It's a beautiful thing, my friend. Well, the uh, pretty much the all around maintenance of the lot, you know, the uh, the ideas that we come up with on the lot, you're pretty much an all around hand with, uh, you know, needing any help. You cross over really in every department when it comes to lending a hand in that way i'll tell you one of the things we did last year that i thought was really cool um i yeah. love what we, we were able to do for the uh the johnny and yuki show where we were able to um capture their video and put it up on the screen i thought that was really kind of cool um dude kind of cool i i have a video that i'm pretty sure went up to patreon but it was me in the digital booth, like freaking out, <laughs> being like, we just raised the bar so hard. And that's that was the biggest um, kind of pivotal show for us last year. And it wasn't the biggest turnout. It wasn't the sellout of the season. It was because we got experimental. We were able to figure out a way to bring an element that we've never been able to bring to the Mahoning to the Mahoning, and it's one of those elements that allows us to do introductions in a way that we never right. have. And like Dave said, pretty much we were able to put a live video feed from the 35 millimeter booth up on the screen. So we do intros and have done intros for almost 10 years at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, and it's always been audio from the 35 booth or under the screen with a video on them. And the idea that we get to put a camera on the people and the action that goes on in that 35 millimeter booth, it's it's crazy to me, you know? And it's gonna add such a level of uh, intimacy and experience for the fan base. It's gonna be so awesome. Yeah, I, I think that was cool. And just being able to see them and be like, wow, they're here. They're, you know, they're here. We, they're literally in that room, and then they're up there. It's, I, yeah, I love it. I think, I think, and you know, as we look at the season, you know, we can take a look at what opportunities present itself for us to to do that again. Yeah, every guest that we have do those. You know, the the pre show shout out. We can totally put it up on screen. It's really just a matter of switching back and forth. Doesn't really affect the. Um, uh, the operation of the 35, it really is just a matter of tossing back and forth to transmitters. So, right, right. Yep. I, you know, it's, it's, it's fun stuff like that. You know, that was a great show last year. I thought, and it was fun. Johnny and Yuki were great as well. I, they were great guests. They were, uh, once again, one of the amazing things that the, the, the Mahoning brings is, is amazing guests like that. So fun hanging out with them just, just uh, in and of itself. It's a good segue, being that you are right at the center of the madness that is the Mahoning Drive-In. Certainly, you have gotten caught up in that whirlwind of guests and, and shows and 
craziness, anything choice in your run stand out that you might not have shared on the last pod? Uh, like guests that I've met? Guests, experiences, craziness. I mean, I'm sure it's like you have a book and a half already, but... <laughs> 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 you're hey, like listen, which night <laughs> listen if if i would have told 1980s dave that at some point in his life he would be driving ginger lynn back to her hotel um in the back seat of his car <laughs> he, he probably w- would have been like yeah no no really so <laughs> so that's one to keep in the bank forever. I'll be telling my I, grandkids that. <laughs> I, it was, it was, and she was so nice. She was the nicest person, the nicest guest. The best. We just had her on the podcast actually last week. Yeah. Oh, she was delightful. And like the first night I was telling her one of the, st- I was telling her a story about how when I worked in the video store, I got to see her face every night. Because the fuse box to flip the light switches was in the back room. <laughs> so, from, so, so from the either, curtain. was it a beaded curtain or a squeaky door? Yeah, it was a squeaky door. Of course. So, it was not a subtle door. So it was it, it and it banged when it closed too. Of it did. So, yeah. so, so every it. night I got to uh, I I got to say goodnight to Ginger Lynn as I flipped off the. And she thought that story was hilarious. She just sat back. She goes, that's a great story. She's having to remember that one. She owns she owns it, dude. You know, that's what I love is, and what we talked about on the podcast, she's been able to pivot like no other, you know, mm-hmm. just to, in her career, in her life. And the fact that she is just so incredibly positive about not just her work, but um, the experiences that she gets to have in life, it's infectious. Yeah, she... she... But, and so it, it's we got to the hotel. She thanked me so kindly for the ride, uh, gave me a hug and a kiss on the cheek, and then went inside. And I'm like, "Wow, this is this is the best." And when I got back to the ho- or back to the lot, I realized that she left her jean jacket in the back of my car. So I let her know, and now I can live off just the sentence of saying. Ginger Lynn left her clothes in the back seat of my <laughs> Very good. Very good. That's excellent, Dave. Way to go. Amazing. <laughs> I love it. Well, we told the story on the um the first crew podcast we did with you about Michael Berry oh my gosh. happy birthday to you. I mean, that's that I'm sure will live forever. That's one of the pinnacles, man. I mean, that's that's the mountain. How do you where do you go from there? I mean, that, that was my, fr- you guys had me hooked because that was my first year there. It's <laughs> like I spend my birthday hanging out with Michael Berryman from, from, you know, the Hills have eyes, just, just shooting the breeze with them, talking about his career and his wolf sanctuary and, and, you know, and then they bring out a cake and I'm like Michael Berryman, Pluto is singing. I'm like, after this, you, you guys are, can't get rid of me now. I mean, that's that's your problem. Our plan worked. <laughs> Just bring out the birthday cake. Solidifies it every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That steals the contract. Oh yeah, it's done. It's done, man. That's. But yeah, we have uh, we've certainly seen endless late nights, endless mounds of trash, oh. <laughs> endless. Uh, lights and runs it's it's great the sheer volume of garbage produced by the joe bob event is is staggering i'm i it truly... was unreal we got a roll off for that event because we knew that we were going to get a, a obscene amount of trash at least compared to a regular night at the mahoning drive-in theater and sure enough we filled that roll off to the brim <laughs> Like a flat out huge dumpster. But it it even that was not nearly as bad as when we were cleaning the periphery and we found the part of the prop from the whale at um Chroma Fest, you know, with oh. with uh, 
<laughs> it was that whale prop that they had. And at the time, we just put it in the back. And it sat back there over, oh, I'd say an entire summer, just festering. Fermenting. And, oh, my God. For anybody who's unaware, who's tuning in late, for Tromathon one year, we had the pre premiere of, now if you're a child or, or easily offended, plug your ears, we had the premiere of a film called Shakespeare's Shitstorm, and the big centerpiece of that film is a whale spraying a whale dung all over people. So the mad geniuses on our production crew created this whale tail that was, you know, taller than a person, maybe eight feet up, that was just, it, just imagine a perpetual chocolate fountain coming out of the back of a whale. <laughs> And uh, Doug Sackman, who had worked on that film as a trauma uh, special effects guy, made up the concoction they used in the film, which wasn't just it wasn't just coloration for the liquid. It was it was vegetable matter. It was it oh, was yeah. corn and all kinds of stuff. And it, and that it sat there for a while after the show. And we thought we were never going to get rid of the smell. It was like in the ground. I know the guys on the lot were like trying to rake the ground and pour things for on the weeks for like for almost the better part of a season. It still smelled. I, I think we dumped an entire barrel of true green or, or whatever on that try. And, and it was, yeah, it, it was corn, but they put chicken in there too, like some kind of chicken. And it was, it was, it was the vegetable material and the meat. And hokey smoke, <laughs> and we, we found this thing. We were trying to haul it over to the dumpster, and even Will, Will, the the Iron Man, got like a third of the way and just tapped out. He said, "I can't do it." He goes, "I give up." He goes, "I don't know." He goes, "This is it. This is too much for me." Um, I tap out. So we still had the. We just all kind of like wrapped something around the lower half of our face, rolled up our sleeves and hauled it the rest of the way across. But man, oh man. Yeah, so since then there's a, a no food policy in the photo op uh, department. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, there's a no food policy in the whale's ass too. <laughs> <laughs> we get very, very... Um, ambitious at the moment he's driving and sometimes there is no limit to the uh the madness that was the yeah this is this is a compliment the grossest and stupidest photo op i've ever seen anywhere <laughs> in and, life and, and it was at our place yeah it was it was ridiculous because uh, when they first started it going they had tried to shred like towels to give it like texture and the problem is the towels got all wedged in there. So they were trying to fix it. And, you know, they're like, of course, us being the dumb lot crew, we're over there trying to help them fix it. And they managed to kick it loose. And it was like, boom, it all came. I got so much of that stuff on me. It was so <laughs> gross. <laughs> It was, it was though, it was brilliant in its way. Once they turned that thing on and it started going, it was, you had to admire oh, the sheer ridiculousness. It definitely, of that. it definitely had the right effect. There's no doubt about that. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that, that was truly a, <laughs> another one of those. Um, so you want to be the lot crew, huh? Kind of experience. <laughs> That's what I say about, about our place. It's never boring. <laughs> That's for sure never know what you're gonna get that's for sure well why don't uh you let people know i mean do you do we have any plans for the new season as far as the uh lot presentation last year you blessed us with uh the fresh coat of paint on the entryway which is holding up beautifully i i definitely um definitely have some ide I ideas for preseason definitely want to look at the sign make sure you know if we have any uh touch-ups we need to do there but i also want to try to uh touch up the paint on the posts too around like with the uh projection window there yeah we haven't done that since uh bruce and that was what 2020 yeah something like that yeah yeah those are so i want to i want to definitely hit those make those uh red and rosy again here and uh you know just generally do what i can to 
spruce her up and make it look bright and shiny. I love the idea of continuing the rope light. Last year, for folks who are regulars, you might have noticed that the red rope light returned at the ticket booth, which is kind of just a guiding rope that leads you to the ticket booth. The way that the Mahoning is set up for folks listening who might not have been to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, uh, you have to make almost a full U-turn to get into line properly at our gate. So if you're coming down Seneca Road, you'll see the theater and think naturally to make a just a, a regular right into the exit way. But what in reality you have to do is, is pretty much hook a full U-turn. And having that rope light there really does help people for those times when the line doesn't guide people. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I know that talking to John, he's like, oh, yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it. I'm like, okay. I like the way it looks, too. It looks great at night when it's all lit up like that. Oh, yeah. It just it, it really makes it stand out, which is which is helpful, especially at night. Well, I know that we put the word out to the Patreoners. Did we get any crazy, weird questions from the Patreonage? We got a crazy, weird question from Mr. Tom Bufolco, who you may know as our regular resident poster artist for, geez, so many events at the Mahoning these last couple of years, it's hard to just pick one or two, but uh, he, he's great. He says, I'd love to know the origin of Dave's unquenchable thirst for moxie. Oh, How did God. I know it was going to have to do with Moxie? <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, Dave is, as much as he rocks the uh, the Mahoning love on a regular basis, if anybody is worthy of being the sponsor of, of the Moxie brand product, I think Dave is right up there. Never without a can of Moxie. <laughs> and that's not always easy either. What is Moxie? Why don't you just explain that? Like, I've only had it once and that was enough. It's like a cinnamon soda, right? Here's here's the thing. You guys, Mahoney is responsible because my first Moxie was at the Mahoney. I, oh, I yeah. Mean, you had it in the, in the refrigerator. And I assume that that's probably been here. Like, like that one case has probably been here since we opened in... In the 1950s, so I think that, um, it's finally aged, Moxie. Uh, so, <laughs> but you know, like a fine wine or 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 or, or a well aged liquor, it, it it just got it better with age. And so <laughs> like, I like I was most like, adult males, it just gets more bitter with age. <laughs> yeah, uh, we use it to kill the ants. <laughs> So, well, somebody got it out of the closet and put it in the fridge. And I'm like fascinated by this because I'm like, I've never, I've heard of it. I've never tried it. And I tried it and I don't know that it, it obviously triggered some center in my brain, either that or the parasite has now taken full latch and is now just demanding, but it's, it's, it really is a difficult flavor to describe. It's, it, it's a bit like root beer if someone if you had someone make root beer who's never actually tried root beer before, that might be what it turns out to be. There seems to be some type of root vegetable involved, maybe turnips. I don't know. But my best reaction on that was my daughter took a sip of it. And she she took a sip of it. She goes, oh, that's that's not bad. And then 30 seconds later, the aftertaste hits you. Yep. Yep, it sticks around. It's, the aftertaste. it's yeah. yeah. It's not the taste of the moxie that gets you. No. It's that aftertaste that hits you like at 30 seconds to a minute later and you go, "Where did that come from? Yeah. What is that?" <laughs> exactly like, "What did I eat that made with that?" So, and that's I think part of the actual the, the like the allure because not only do you get to experience the moxie once, but you get to savor that all day long after you've had a can of Moxie. So you get your money's worth in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> One sip will oh, yeah. last you all day long. Yeah, it almost reminds me of like those root beer barrel candies. Like, mm -hmm. like you said, it's root beer based, but it's not as good as root beer. Root beer. There's, something is off. And that's a good <laughs> segue. You were also... You are also a lover of weird old school candies, which we love about you. You're one oh, of the yeah. few people on the planet that can eat a circus peanut with a smile. 
Well, well, that Will is the circus peanut expert. I I, <laughs> I lead a circus peanut with a grimace, but uh, Will will pound those things down, which truly frightens me. Now, they all they all mock me for for the bit of honeys, but yeah. So we we always have out at the gate. It's become a bit of a tradition now. The gate candy bin, and that is just full of these old school candies that you just simply can't find anymore because most of the people who used to like them are dead now so <laughs> perhaps as a result of consuming those candies now that's a result of drinking the moxie Probably. <laughs> it's i think the moxie counteracts it i think it's it's a balancing act really oh. <laughs> slow acting uh, liquid embalming fluid exactly yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, th I miss the uh, the old candy bin. It's it's nice because, you know, if you need an, a little pick-me-up on those late nights, just roll on over, see Dave and the crew at the gate, and grab yourself some sweets. Good to go. Yeah. Now, another thing that Dave is doing this year that's new to him and us is you're working on our pre-show slideshows. I'm excited to, 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 to try it for you guys this year. I'm... I'm... You know, I'm, I'm trying out for the job. Hopefully, I'll land it. It's a high bar. I mean, you I know, know, you know it. Andy's Andy has done an amazing job with the uh, the pre-show uh, slides, and continuing that is is a, it's 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 big shoes. Hundred hundred percent and respect. And I am going to endeavor to live up to that, and hopefully, add some. Uh, information and some uh and some pizzazz to the to the pre-show you know keep people's attention uh at least uh on the screen for some of the stuff we want to relate to them such as the upcoming shows and 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 some helpful tips i'm giving the patreon a push as well as our podcast i'm looking at it and figuring you know as as the season goes on you know, I can definitely change this out, keep it fresh, get new images, get new new feeds up there. So I think it's fun. I, I've I've been working on it for a little while. It's I think it's entertaining because it's kind of giving me a bit of a creative outlet. So um, I'm actually looking at you and thanking you for the opportunity because I think it's going to be a, a real fun, a real fun gig to do so excited and there's so much going on this year it's like oh yeah it's really great to have that flexibility to say hey we just had this person who's now interested in coming we need a slide by tomorrow <laughs> yeah you never know how quick it's gonna come or what's gonna come you know it and uh easy enough to do that's right it's a beautiful thing keeps it creative you know that's what i always say is like there are endless opportunities for creativity at the mahoning any given show oh, yeah. any given moment really it's it's kind of a gift that keeps giving well i mean yeah and that's i think that's one of the one of the advantages and one of the benefits of working here and each department has that opportunity i mean you got beth who is incredibly creative when it comes to her the specials that she can't you know comes up with each week and her promotions and that's she's incredibly good at that and very creative and i think she enjoys that aspect of it and the creativity heck yeah and sandy and in, in the merch stand has opportunities to you know create what's going to be the next piece of merch what's what's our next designs and all that jt when it comes to the photo ops obviously a hugely creative opportunity and all of these all of these guys and all of these departments do such a fantastic job i'm, I'm i mean it, it's it's what raises the bar on the mahoning as an organization so for me i'm i'm excited to try to contribute to that by uh you know a little bit of creativity in the in the slideshow here so my okay. my contributions we all motivate each other to raise that bar Right. Uh, well, before we jump into our off the wall portion of the show, I want to give the guys uh, an opportunity if they have any burning questions for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> This drive-in theater is radioactive. Now you can hear tonight's show on your AM car radio. Turn your ignition key to the accessory position. 
This will not drain your car battery. Now turn on your radio and zero in on the following AM station. Well, we like to do something fun on the show uh, whenever we have family members in. Uh, we call it Off the Wall because uh, we're pretty much just pulling some favorites off the wall. Um, and it can be movies, it can be vinyl records, it can be comic books, it can be anything from your collection or technically off your wall. So I'll start this Off the Wall segment. Of late, I've been watching, and you guys will appreciate this for sure, some old like Bowery Boys, East End Kids. So have I. I love that. That's so oh. weird. No way. Oh, yeah. Well, TCM ran a whole bunch of them, and I've, I've got a DVR again, so I DVR'd all of them. I've seen most of them, but they're these wonderful, like, 70-minute comedies, and they're, I love uh, them. They are so good. Like, don't get me wrong, they are dated, and there are moments that they are incredibly dated. But I'll tell you what, the comedy, the delivery, the charm of these boys, it just, it'll knock your socks off. And, like, it's just one of those things that... I find myself going back to pretty regularly. It's it's an easy classic trip down a, a path that I never got to experience in my lifetime. And, and like you said, Mark, they're very easy pills to swallow. They're never epically long you know i can watch it with virgie they're never offensive it's and they they dip into various genres i mean some are like world war ii espionage some are haunted house movies some are boxing movies some are gangster movies i mean like they really spun the wheel and hit them all yeah it's just it's one of those things i was thinking about like we don't have that you know a modern version of a bowery boys or an east end kids where you have this kind of group or troop always out there doing their thing i mean i guess the closest we might have got were those broken lizard guys over the last couple of years but maybe just because they were all in the same you know movies together but these guys were just so um phenomenal and who was the main jeff you probably know who were the two main guys in the east end kids leo gorsi and hunts hall yeah leo gorsi I should remember that Tarantino, uh, I just got done reading Tarantino's book, Cinema Speculation, and yes. uh, he talks about the, he talks about them in, in, the, in the book, how he was, he's a fan of them as well. So actually, uh, yeah, I don't remember them as well, but it, it is cool that he, he has a lot of positive things to say about them as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it reminds me of I went through a phase of the Keystone Cops and the silent era comedies. And it's the same thing there. Every now and then I'll get a draw to go back to it. But it's funny that you brought up cinema speculation because they added a whole category on Tubi, which I love Tubi. It's <laughs> they, they are not a sponsor, but I'll tell you what, like they practically are a sponsor of my life at this point. But they have a whole <laughs> category called cinema speculation. Do they? Yeah, and that's honestly where I started going down the the rabbit hole recently because they had a ton on Tubi. It's like it just keeps going and going. And that's Very another cool. reason I love Tubi is you can watch one thing for 70 minutes and you'll blink and the whole day has been curated and programmed by Tubi. And it just goes and goes and goes and goes. Oh, Doesn't gosh. I um, That Cinema Speculation book is very good. It actually, if you have a chance to read it, it's excellent. His theories and talking about, like, the cinema of the 70s is really fascinating. And then tying in some personal antidotes to it. But I, I agree with you, Verge, that Tubi is so cool. I, I just discovered it relatively recently. And it was like walking into a candy store. I was just like, whoa, there's a movie I, I always wanted to see. There's a movie I always wanted to see. Yeah, it's, it reminds me of like a killer mom and pop shop where it's like, don't get me wrong. You can go to Blockbuster slash Netflix and, you know, find anything that you want. That's the big, you know, sell of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you go to the mom and pop and they just got some more deep cut gems. And I find like, yeah. more often than not. I can find something really quick on Tubi where I'm like cruising for, you know, days sometimes on some of these other streamers. Oh yeah, I mean, and listen, you're right. It's it is. It's like the mom and pop. You can go to uh, you can go to nice safe blockbuster, or you can go to mom and pop and and find Dolomite. You know, it's uh, I watched that the other night. It there's just so many crazy, 
insane movies on there. And then they just start like, hitting you with more Rudy Ray Moore. It just goes yeah. further down the rabbit hole. You're like, Tubi, what are you doing to me? <laughs> I, well, yeah, and you, you do have to be careful, like how many movies you watch of a single like genre, because if you watch too many, then they're like, oh, this is this is what he. And before you know it, <laughs> you're like, whoa. You start getting okay. recommended some weird shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Hold on, guys. Um, I, Listen, I was tired. I was a little high. It seemed like a good idea. I it, okay? It's not who I am, all right? All right. I'm not proud of it, damn it. But, <laughs> but, but don't keep reminding me of it every day. Well, that cinema speculation is a great off the wall suggestion right there. You know, it was fun because as I was reading the book, what I would do is like I would read the chapter and then I would go back and like watch like the movies that were referenced or were, you know, that they referenced in the chapter or multiple of of that they referenced. So, you know, I, I rewatched Deliverance. I rewatched uh, Rolling Thunder because he's a big Rolling Thunder fan. If you don't know. <laughs> That, that was the name of his distribution company that he had. Bro. Oh my Lincoln god, Pictures. he loves that movie. So you know, I rewatched that one. So it was it was fun reading it, hearing his stories, and a lot of behind the scenes stories. He's a big fan of Steve McQueen, so he talked about The Getaway, which I think is a good film. Good, I, I love that movie so much. And Bullet. So I I so I got to so I rewatched Bullet and Get and The Getaway, so I got a little bit of Steve McQueen there, which was a blast. So yeah, it's it was it was a lot of fun, and I think it it helped me look at a couple different films with a little bit of a different perspective, and and um, enjoyed it. Definitely, definitely worth a worth a read. I don't know how uh, you know smart it is to promote another podcast on our podcast, but. Uh, you guys know it. We're friends with QT. We work with Quentin and the Video Archives podcast that him and Roger Avery have been doing is nothing short of just genius. And it has the same appeal. They cover usually three movies each episode. And, you know, I'll find that it's deep cut, you know, and stuff that I have just missed or, or over uh, went over my head, I guess. But uh, I've been doing the same thing. I'll listen to the pod and then I'll go revisit it. And it's just like, oh, so good to have that perspective. Yeah. I mean, there were a couple films that he mentioned that, and I was like, I, I didn't really like them that much the first time I saw them, but it's been a couple years. Maybe, maybe a review with a different perspective is due. And, you know, it definitely it increased my enjoyment of them. So I think it's interesting because, like, that's the same kind of thing that, not to, uh, I don't know if it's a weird transition, but the same kind of thing like Joe Bob does. Like, when I watch the, like, episodes of Last Drive-In, why I really like him as a horror movie host is he talks to you about the movie, about the production of the movie, about the people who were in the movie, and their history and their background, then lets you watch the movie... And then fills you in a little bit more. I, I like that kind of analysis. Your hand during this. That's what I always loved about a horror host. It's like there is somebody there to, you know, analyze along with you and kind mm -hmm. of give you that. You guys know it. I mean, one of my favorite parts of movie going and the experience is the conversations you get to have after the film. Uh, and what you just saw with the people that you went to see it with or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So he is, he's that guy, even if you don't have that guy, you know? Yep. And I'll tell you, that's one of the things I absolutely love about the Mahoney drive-in because the first weekend I was there, I was working with Will and we ended up getting into must have been an hour long conversation about Dario Argento and our favorite Dario Argento films. And I'm like, this is the first place I've ever gone where I can actually speak to somebody about Dario Argento. And they don't think that I'm like, oh, it's been like that since day one. Yeah. It's like, I don't think it's like, yeah, you know, they, they don't think I'm speaking, you know, about some kind of Italian restaurant. Yeah. A guy that makes pizza. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think James has a great quote in the documentary that, you know, he talks about nobody cares 
at his work about you know the fact that this cool thing is happening and then you get here and it's like every person on the lot is just out of their mind excited about what they're about to get into and i think that's that is why the mahoning is the easiest place to make friends is it's just so like-minded everybody is so wanting uh that aspect of the cinematic community culture you know oh and absolutely it delivers how about you guys mark you have anything off the wall I actually grabbed two, but I think due to time constraints, we'll just do we'll do what's immediately in front of me. This is the first time we've done this where I've literally grabbed something off the wall because I've got a shelf to put things on again. So the first movie I ever saw, I, I've, I've not nailed this down, but I'm pretty sure the first movie I ever saw in a theater was at a drive-in. And my mother took me to see Saturday Night Fever as a three-year-old because I liked the songs that were playing on the radio from the soundtrack. <laughs> and if you ever saw if you saw let's say for 77 78 if you saw a tv spot for saturday night fever you'd think oh it's that fun disco dancing movie if you've seen saturday night fever and a lot of people write it off because they think oh it's some silly disco movie right. it's a really heavy drama it's a yes. really good heavy drama that happens to have some disco scenes in it and some good dancing and some really good a really good soundtrack and uh, it's a movie I've always loved. Like once I got a little bit older, I watched it again thinking it was going to be silly. And I'm like, wow, this is a really good movie. And uh, I've, been, I've been able to sense, see it on the big screen again. Never had a drive in again. Uh, maybe when we do Denny Terrio weekend, we can finally make it. <laughs> um, and, you, you, we've been talking about it since day one. We joke about this all the time. Denny Terrio is the guy who was the, uh, the choreographer and taught Travolta how to dance for Saturday Night Fever, and Fever was so huge that Denny Terrio became famous and got a show called Dance Fever that was the syndicated show that was on nationally like well into the 80s that was basically a disco dance contest. Think yeah. American Idol, but with people just doing disco. Um, you know, so, I do, rem I, I remember that in syndication, that Danny too, Terrio, yeah. yeah. He, was, he would be the host, he'd come out and he'd dance with a couple of lovely ladies, yep. and then it would be like a celebrity panel, like Jamie Farr, it was almost like the gong show, a few people would hold up, they would rate the dancers, and then at the end somebody would win a prize or something like that. Right um, place, right time, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've got this Blu-ray, I haven't actually even opened it yet, it's the uh, director's cut of Saturday Night Fever, so I don't know how different that is. Oh, um, cool. I know the movie pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I quote it pretty often about, you know, uh, you know, I work a long time on my head and he hits it. Uh, so I'm really excited to watch this, but I want to just bring up this. It's very important to me in my life as a mega film fan that this is the movie that literally started it for me. And then I look back wow. now and realize, oh, yeah, and it was at a drive-in, too. It's a very R-rated film. And uh, I, I remember it being kind of scary at times because there's like a, a suicide in the movie. And yeah, uh, I was, still remember what it looked gonna like. It's going to leap off the bridge, right? Yeah. I still remember that in my brain that was burned in my brain as a kid on this gigantic screen at this uh, local drive-in. So yeah, so my pick was uh, Saturday Night Fever, which I would highly recommend. That's, That's great. Impressive. Absolutely. It's a good film. The Absolutely. sequel, on the other hand, somebody actually suggested it. We do a suggested Staying that Alive. Movie. Somebody said, you should show that in Staying Alive. And I'm like, well, I saw Staying yeah. Alive, you know, more recently in the scheme of things. And I thought it was terrible. I thought it was terrible when it was brand new. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, it's worth watching, I guess, because it's, you can laugh at it, but it's, it's like, in, it's insulting if you're a fan of the original and you watch that. Was that directed by Sylvester or Frank Stallone? Sylvester Stallone with, there's a big song in it from Frank Stallone. Okay. Yeah. You're telling me they didn't give Terrio a shot to direct? <laughs> I don't know if they brought him back for choreography. It's just this bizarre, uh, watch it and see. And the only, the only thing really redeeming about the film is at the very end when he goes strutting down the sidewalk again and they're playing one of the songs from the first one. That was yeah. the only good part of the movie. Which I thought was a huge cheat. At the end, this whole movie happens and then he says some kind of positive th positive thing. He goes strutting down you know, through you know, Broadway or Times Square at night and, and yeah. Staying Alive comes up. And I'm like, you that's know, it. You, you can't get off that easy by giving me a crap <laughs> film. <and laughs> You're like, that's the movie I want to Giving me the see. big song from the first movie so that I'll walk out of the theater <laughs> smiling. You don't know. Yeah, that, yeah that, that, that was really lousy. Yeah. That's a cheat. Yeah, total. Oh, man. Popcorn, popcorn, everyone for popcorn. Do it now. Pop out for a big box of fresh, delicious popcorn. It tastes good, and it's good for you. Popcorn, popcorn, everyone for popcorn. Let's all pop out for popcorn. We have so many surprises that we are, like, biting our lips on with uh, the upcoming season, but... 
We can say without a doubt, this is definitely going to be the greatest season yet. You guys have been seeing the events come out pretty much every other day. Uh, We're a good three months in advance to all the shows that are coming. And a weird thing is happening now more than ever. We will announce a show and then a guest will reach out to us and say, hey, that's a really cool show. Can I come? (laughs) Wow. So there's now the juggle of trying to include some guests in some shows that have already been announced, uh, which is a really fun angle. It's, I mean, honestly, it's flattering knowing that A, our events spread that far and are reaching Hollywood and the uh, the stars of the movie, and B, that people are so excited to want to come in and join uh, the Mahoning family and and be a part of the culture. Right. And more than anything, that's what we hear is guests have a great time and all, but they really fall in love with our mission and the fact that we show 35 millimeter and are sticking to our guns with passion. It goes a really long way with people who pretty much gave their lives up to storytelling. Yeah. And what I like about it is that uh, we, you guys know, even if it's last minute, these guests want to come. If there's any way Virgil can land them and get them in here. He'll do it. Oh, yeah. There's a there's a choice one that we're working on now. And it's it's really a matter of, hey, can we make this work? Can we promote it right? Right. You know, I saw a great quote on one of the drive-in fan pages, and it was another owner saying that it's great to run retro, but for it to really work, there needs to be a powerhouse of promotion behind it to get it out yeah. there to people. Because without it, people will make that decision really quickly to say, eh, I can just watch it at home, or I'll just pull it off the wall, and if I really want to see it, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll stream it. Right. That's why we have the, the right people around us at the right time. And I think uh, a blessing from God, too. But let me tell you, I had a very well-known, respected figure in the industry say to me that you can't do this. It's not going to work. You'll go broke. And Virgil had some movie studios tell him the same thing. Yeah. But they don't say anything now. No, we, it, we're the anomaly. And even uh, yeah. talking to other owners across the country, you can really get the temperature, you know? Right. For us, it made total sense. The idea of choosing to do that is, it's a really hard gamble. And I see, but, yeah. you know, that it's, it's really, I think, um, a destined, like you said, Jeff, maybe a higher power situation that brought us all together. And we can really fire on all cylinders and, make what has to happen to make a show successful happen. Exactly. Exactly. This was a blast, guys. I love doing these family podcasts, these off-the-wall segments. It just kind of, you know, shows behind the curtain a little bit with our tastes and what we've been up to. It's, It's been great. It's been a sincere pleasure on my part just to be able to get together with you guys again after uh, after so many months. I miss you guys. I, I sincerely look forward to the upcoming season and being able to see you again and, and spend some time together. Absolutely. It's only about six weeks to go. Yeah. Counting down. It's coming. Um, yeah, and it, the event will be over by the time this podcast comes out, but we are going to have a blast at Creature Feature Con. Uh, Dave's coming up with us to Gettysburg. We're going to promote the Mahoning like crazy. Wear our hoodies, our hats. And represent. Great. Heck yeah. I can't wait. Um, all right, buddy. Well, uh, I'll see you this weekend. And um, I will see you for sure on the lot. And on that note, Jeff, take it away, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for coming out tonight to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater. We hope you'll come back and see us again real soon. The exit is on the right-hand side of the screen at the front of the field. And most importantly, have a very safe trip home. Good night and God bless you.